Hello everybody, welcome to Soul Talker. On our last Korean food episode, we introduced the history behind the dok or the food that we usually translate as rice cake. And today I'm going to introduce you three different foods that's actually made from dok. And I've told you that I personally don't agree with the translation rice cake because dok is used in different kinds of food and it's weird to say that rice cake is used for food. The three food that I'm going to introduce to you are dokko, Tteokbokki and Tteokramyeon. Those are very common food eaten by Koreans, easy to be made, easy to be found in Korea. We'll look at the history of those food and we'll show you what they're made of. <coughs> the soup for Tteokbokki were traditionally simmered from pheasant in the Joseon dynasty, but any kind of meat stock can be used for the base for the soup these days. What I've done was I've bought a pre-made soup that's sold in the supermarket. The specific history of Tteokguk is unknown. The only fact known about Tteokguk is that it's been eaten by the Koreans for a very very long time, maybe hundreds of years. And in Korea we usually eat Tteokguk on our New Year's Day, and this comes from a traditional thinking that the white color of the specific duck that's used will bring good luck for the rest of the year. And the duck that's used for tteokguk and for tteokbokki or tteokramyeon is made from a duck called karet duck. It's a long shaped duck and the duck is sliced up in different ways according to its use and it has a different thickness depending on where it is being used at. So making a tteokguk is very very simple. As I said they sell a meat stock in the supermarkets in Korea. It costs only about one US dollars. You can buy this kind of duck almost anywhere in Korea. So all you have to do is buy the meat stock and buy the duck, combine it, wait until the duck gets softened up and it has a texture of a duck and add salt or pepper to it and perhaps some more ingredients if you want and you'll have a duck. What I've done was I've added a dried seaweed as a garment but in Korea we also add garments made from egg or we use meat as garment for the duck. And we mix all the garments with the soup and the duck and we eat it together. And there's one of the most traditional Korean food. But when we have a family gathering at the New Year's, of course we don't buy the meat stock from the market. Each household has a different way of making their own stock. Some make it out of seafood, some make it out of beef. So the families have different ways of making their own stock. So they make that stock and that, that stock is what's really special about the dakuk in the specific households and dakuk is made from different ingredients in different provinces in Korea. In some areas you may even add dumplings. In other areas you may add different kind of garments. So that's how the variation is made. And dakuk for different people will be remembered as a different taste depending on the stock and the garments. Now, tteokbokki literally means fried duck. Tteokbokki is also a very, very old and traditional Korean food. But the original shape of tteokbokki wasn't like this. Tteokbokki wasn't red. Original tteokbokki was made from a soy sauce base and it was usually eaten by the kings or the royal families. So the traditional tteokbokki is usually called kungjung tteokbokki. That means tteokbokki at the palace. It's not clear when the hot and spicy tteokbokki came to rise, but some of the famous Tteokbokki places claim that they've been making that since 1950s or the 60s. So we can definitely say that the current form of Tteokbokki, which is hot and spicy usually, were developed after Korea gained independence from the Japanese annexation after the Cold War and it's been around for a maximum about 50 years. And as for the Tteokbokki, there's a very big debate on the Tteokbokki. We call it the Biltok versus Saltok. That means a Tteokbokki made from wheat flour or rice. Those that like the tteokbokki made from wheat flour claim that the tteokbokki doesn't get hardened. It stays soft for a longer time. But those that favor tteokbokki that uses duck made out of rice claim that it's more chewy and although it doesn't last chewy for a longer period of time, that is healthier and the duck made from rice is usually thicker so it has a better texture they claim. This is actually a very very big debate among the Koreans. And for the tteokbokki that you're seeing, I've added on prawn to it and I've added omu. We translate it as fish cake. So I don't think rice cake is the right translation for duck. I don't think fish cake is the right translation for omu. This is sort of like a sausage that's made just from fish and we usually mix the duck and the omu in the tteokbokki and this is a very common combination that we see in Korea. And you saw that I've added some dried noodle to the tteokbokki. We call this kind of tteokbokki a rapbokki. 
is a combination of reward of ramyeon and tteokbokki and the tteokbokki that you're seeing right now i didn't make it out of my own sauce there's actually a seller that sells a tteokbokki that's packed ready to be cooked all i have to do is put in all the ingredients that's packaged together and then we'll be able to make a tteokbokki in about 10 to 15 minutes and it's delicious and it doesn't have any artificial ingredients in it and they sell different tteokbokki with a different level of spiciness and when we eat tteokbokki we usually eat it with a uh, we call it a tikim it's like a different kind of fries and in this case i've made fried dumplings that goes really well with the tteokbokki and tteokbokki is one of the most common street foods in korea i guarantee you you can probably find tteokbokki anywhere in seoul or korea in the street Ramyeon is a Korean word for the dry noodles, the dried instant noodles that we eat. The instant dried noodles were first invented by the Japanese in the late 1950s and it was imported to Korea in the 1960s by a company called Samyang. And the ramyeon culture in Korea is very well developed and there are lots and lots of different kind of ramyeons that's been produced and consumed by the Koreans. This was possible because in the 1960s, the Korean government banned Koreans from eating rice because the rice consumption was going too high and they've asked the people to start eating flowers or rice that's mixed with different crops. And because ramyeon or the instant noodles were made from flowers, it began to be sold really, really fast. The fact that 15 million ramyeon was sold in 1969 one year alone shows how popular the ramen got instantly. And when making the ramen, there's also a very big debate in Korea. I've added the powder to make the soup of the instant noodle first, but some claim that noodles should be placed first. Those that made ramen like me claim that the soup first has to be made and heated up, and then the noodle needs to be added on so that the soup can infiltrate into the noodle. But those that claim that noodle needs to be put in first to the hot water claim that, that the texture of noodle would be less delicious. And in Korea, when you make ramyeon, they usually ask people to bring the noodle out into the air so that the texture will be more chewy. And in Korea, what we do is we add different ingredients to the instant noodles when we eat them. And one of the most common like garments that's added to the instant noodle is tteok, and we call this a tteok ramyeon. So tteok ramyeon is basically an instant noodle with the tteok. And in Korea, when we eat ramyeon, we usually eat it with different kind of kimchi. And I've just taken some of the side dishes from a refrigerator and two different kind of kimchi out to eat with the tteok ramyeon. As you have seen in this episode, and you can check out our previous episode on Korean food, tteok is a very common food among the Koreans, but it's not very well marketed to the non-Koreans. I will try to introduce this kind of food on our channel, so, sus so subscribe to our channel and like our videos. Thank you for viewing our video.